Leslie Hunt. And next on Saving American Energy, we travel to one of the most beautiful places on earth. And no, this isn't heaven. This is Iowa. Growing up in the energy capital of the world, Houston, Texas, I learned the value of hard work. I also learned that without the grit of Americans working every day to provide us with energy, the lights will go out. We are fighting to make sure that that never happens. I'm Wesley Hunt, and I'm running for Congress to restore, defend, and preserve American energy independence. But I can't do it alone. That's why I'm traveling the country in search of the brave, patriotic, and innovative leaders that power our lives. I want to tell their stories and change the conversation from energy transition to energy addition. Together, we're saving American energy. Our next stop on saving American energy takes us to a place dreams are made of, or at least where movies about dreams are made. Sat between the Missouri and Mississippi rivers is a place known for its rolling plains, endless cornfields, and a strong sense of community. Welcome to Iowa. The long road ahead takes us to Charles City, Iowa, to meet the Patriots of Valero, who are turning bushels of corn into 140 million gallons of fuel per year. Hunt, right here in Charles City, Iowa, Valero Renewables, and they are turning corn into fuel. And you know what that means. They are saving American energy. We'll meet plant manager Chad Buffington in just a minute. But first, let's take a peek at what the employees of Valero Renewables in Charles City do. The Valero Renewables plant in Charles City has more than 70 full-time employees. The corn used here is sourced from local farmers within a 50-mile radius. 49 million bushels of corn are processed here each year, creating 140 million gallons of ethanol and 368,000 tons of dry distiller's grains. The entire kernel of corn is turned into value-added products that we use every day. Now that we've covered the basics, Let's get this tour kicked off. So my name is Chad Buffington. I am the plant manager of the Valero Renewables Charles City site here in Charles City, Iowa. Yeah. Um, we are a 140 million gallon per year ethanol plant. And so how many people work at this plant? Uh, currently we are at 70 employees. And we pull from seven surrounding counties to fulfill those slots. Excellent, excellent. And how long have y'all been here? Uh, the facility has been in operation since um, January of 2007, so okay. 15 years. 15 years, and how long have you been here? I've been here 15 of those There you years. go. <laughs> Fantastic. Different Fantastic. roles, obviously, the organization, but I've been very fortunate. Excellent. So, so you know, tell us a little, a, little, a little bit about Valero and kind of your story and how you got here and how you got in the industry. So, honestly, I'm a, a local boy. I grew up about 30 miles from the plant, uh, so been here all my life. Um, after college, bopped around a few jobs, but end up finding my way to a job fair here in town, okay. and the rest is history. Okay, and you, and you never left? I've never left. And no attention on leaving too, huh? Nope, no attention. <laughs> They're good. too good to me here, that's good. for sure. As we discover throughout our tour, Chad isn't the only employee who feels that way. 15 years of commitment seems like a minimum around here. Our first stop on the tour takes us to where it all began the incoming corn. So here's our scale house. Um, I said all the trucks processed. There's an inbound scale. You say 220 trucks per day. That's about what we average. It's it's intense. That's amazing. And then, so, so here's our basically start of the whole process. So we've got Shannon down here. Um, Dennis is up top running the probe right now. Okay. Um, like I said, 220 trucks a day, probably average, right, Shannon? It's the most typical day. Um, right now we got a new system right there, so they're kind of 
We've had it for about a, what, a month maybe? Yep. This is brand new. RFID readers. Yep. Okay. Um, so right now the truck's actually just scan and interact with the kiosk. Look at all that. Previously Shannon was doing all the interaction back and forth, entering stuff manually in the computer, so. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so far so good. So it's fully automated. Yep. Weigh it in. Yep. Drop it off. And she can watch everything you're doing. So this little window right there is that kiosk. So she can see them, interact with it, whatever okay. they're punching in and doing. Um, for food safety compliance, there's pictures taken, all that stuff, acknowledgement okay. statements. And how long have you been here, ma'am? It'll be 16 years from January. 16 years. Good for you. She's another original. Where are you from? I am uh, originally Doherty, but I live in Mason City. Okay, awesome. It's about 30 miles from 30 miles. Okay. Okay, well, it's good to meet you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Really? Welcome. Of course. Well, you want to head up there and see? Yeah, please. Let's see. Let's see check it out. Let's do this stuff. So he's at a high enough vantage point where he can see right inside that truck. You can see he's running the joystick there, pulling the Just sample. Pull the sample in. Then we pull it over. Right now it's pulling out. Look at the visual sample. And then one sample will go to our moisture test weight. Okay. It goes that machine there. Okay. And our other sample back here blows into this room behind you, and it, it tests for foreign material. And what are you what are you testing for? Any kind of mold or heat damage. All this looks really pretty good. It's you know? pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Now, how often? Um, how often do you get? I guess would you call it a bad batch or a bad load? This time of the year, it's common a few times a day, probably, to reject the load. So we have a discount schedule, basically, right? So it yeah. hits the different criteria and different parameters, okay. and there's discounts imposed, right? So the drivers and the farmers know, right? I mean, they don't want to exceed X, yes. and then basically take a hit on what they're bringing us, or, you know, they can... So they, they're pretty much self-select and send the good stuff. Yeah. Because yep. they have an idea of where the yep. parameters are. Yep. They know if it's For bad sure. or if it's... Yep. Yep. And, you know, depending on the size of the farmer and the operation they have to, right, they might have the capability to blend some of the batter stuff with the good and, you know, kind of even it out that way too. Okay, excellent. Avoid some discounts. Excellent. So this is the quality control office. Pretty much. That's the start of it. Now, before we go any further, let's take a deep dive into how Valero turns corn into ethanol. How is ethanol made? It's a simple biological process which utilizes some very sophisticated technology and equipment. First, Corn is ground to a fine grain so that the starch and kernel is exposed. Next, water is added, then enzymes are added to the water. This mixture, called mash, is heated to around 185 degrees. At that temperature and with the aid of enzymes, the corn starch in the mixture breaks down to become fermentable sugars. Next, it's cooled and yeast is added. Yeast consumes or eats the sugars, a process called fermentation. As the yeast ferment, they release carbon dioxide and convert the sugars into alcohol. Once this process is complete, the resulting mixture is similar to beer. Next, the distillation process begins where heat is added, turning it into 95% alcohol vapor. It then moves to a second distillation stage, becoming 195 proof alcohol. The alcohol then goes through a condenser, which turns the vapor to liquid. Once a liquid, the alcohol passes through a molecular sieve to extract the remaining water. This results in the fine ethanol product, 200 proof or 99% alcohol. The resulting product is then added to rail cars, gasoline is added, and the ethanol is shipped. And that's how you get fuel from corn. Valero is not only creating ethanol, it's working on projects to capture and sequester the CO2 as well. Now from quality control to delivery, let's check out the intake process. It's dropped in the pits here and just conveyed underground with a whole network of conveyors below us. <laughs> which then takes the silos or rocks the plant right away from processing. Usually what's the time? How long does it take for him to drop the load and then, and then leave? A minute. So there's, a, there's a conveyor system under, underneath? Yep, yep. So we have a small office here where about four guys work per shift. Um, they'll kind of monitor this whole system, right? The grain transfer, the DDG loading. Um, actually, the whole plant can actually op be operated here if you need to. It's all integrated. All integrated. And everything, every single piece of the plant can be operated in this room. It could be. Yep. It could be. Our operator is actually in the office now. He came down from up above. Okay. He's loading rail cars. He's going to do it all via camera. And instruct the driver to pull forward, back up, and pull this trailer. Oh 
Yeah, let's check it out. But you can see right now, he's watching this truck right behind you get loaded. He's actually loading him, actually, I should say. Um, so he's controlling it all through the system over here. He'll be talking to the driver on the radio, telling him to you know move forward, back up, whatever he needs to do, just to top him off. There you go. Get his max weight in there. And what's getting loaded in here? Uh, so that's our DDG, so our dry distillers grains. Okay. Um, basically a bright product of fermentation that we've been able to dry down to a 10% moisture. Mm -hmm. It's high protein and goes into a lot of cattle, hog, and poultry. Farms. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. Now, if you don't mind, could you kind of walk us through what the byproducts are here at the plant? Absolutely. The samples? Yeah. Right. First, we'll start with the corn flour. This is the actual ground flour from the corn that okay. we receive on a daily basis in order to make the ethanol. So this is our starch source. Okay. Wow. And some of the byproducts then, in addition to ethanol that we produce, uh, are dried distiller's grain. Right. This is about a 10% moisture and it's pretty flowable and has a lot of good nutrients and you yeah. can smell the sweetness of it. Yes, you can. Um, it's sweet and yes, it flowable and, and very good nutrition uh, to supplement for cows, pigs. And this is this is what we saw um, that was being unloaded yep. into the vehicles was, was, was this product correct, right here, correct? Correct, correct, correct. So we have trucks that go out mm -hmm. and we also uh, go by rail car. Okay. Um, this is a version of the distiller's grains, but it's called modified. It's a okay, little so different it's and, and it's wetter. It's about a 50% moisture. Yep. And this, so, this stays local. Local and it's got a four or five day shelf life. You can see also still good in nutrients. Yes. Um, uh, this is a front end sample. Excuse my, oh, and it's warm, please. Oh. Careful there. So this oh. is the corn flour with water. Okay and it's nice and liquidy and we want it warm yes so that we're activating uh, the starch breakdown it just smells like mash and that's exactly what it's supposed to smell like so let's be honest here this is, i was joking but let's be honest you're all are making beer here we are this is not a it's not ethanol we're not going to sugarcoat you know? <laughs> we call it beer we call it beer right? we call it beer we call it beer we do and what's this next one craft brewery in the state all right <laughs> uh this is distiller's um oil okay that's just versus plain old oil yeah plain old oil and this is stripped off as a byproduct that has a uh, good value both in diesel uh, renewable diesel as well as feedstock okay and about four trucks of these go out a day. Okay. Um, this is the precursor to this, and this is called syrup. It's also a byproduct that can be sold as is, and it pours like maple syrup. If okay. I, Real careful. It's pretty thick. There it is. Wow. Also nutritious. Um, it can be sold as is, but we reuse it and put it on our dried distillers. Okay. So okay. it's part of the recycling program and the sustainability that we have through the plant. And everything pretty much stays contained in this plant. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, thank you, man. <laughs> That's good. So you're probably going to put, what, close to about 25 tons in him, Trinity? Yeah. Just go over that. Okay. So you've processed these grains? Yeah. So all that corn that comes in, right? Yes. You know, it's a whole kernel. We're going to grind it into a very fine, fine powder. We'll mix it with a bunch of water, enzymes, they'll go into those fermenter tanks for two days. By that point, the yeast have done their act, or their job there and basically made that tank 14% ethanol, 14-15% uh -huh. ethanol on a good day. Um, we'll run that system, or that stream then through our distillation system. It'll separate that alcohol out, and this is all that grain, corn that's left. That's left. It's all that's left over. And then you sell that back to yep. the farmer. We run it through a series of dryers, you know, take it from a 50% or 60% moisture all the way down to a 10%. So basically almost 100% of the corn that gets dropped off in here gets used or gets recycled or gets put back into the system in some capacity. Yep. Yep. Either it's fermented or it goes back out on, on these on these trucks yep. for feed. We have virtually zero waste, right? Everything that comes in is reused. Um, our water, it's all recycled back into the plant. Um, there's a few slip streams, you know, with softener blowdowns and coolant tower blowdowns, just keep kind of conductivities in spec. Uh -huh. That gets discharged with water treatment to a local creek. Um, but everything else, it's housed all in site and reused. Perfect. This is really impressive. And how long have you been here, sir? 15 years. 15. So you were here when the plan started as well. <laughs> Pretty close. A lot of y'all running around. <laughs> now that we've seen the incoming and outgoing corn, let's visit Central Command and the lab in the heart of the plant. Show you where the control room is. 
the guy running everything. Thank you, bro. And inside here There's is the, the control guy room, running huh? the place. So we got Alex, he works in our lab with Paula, Hi. around the corner there. How, how are you, Alex? I've oh. got it. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> okay. uh, Wesley. Wesley, okay. It's, it's, good, it's good to meet you, Alex. Thank you. How, how, how are you doing, Ray? Good. Wesley, how are you? Wesley Hunt, it's good nice to meet, meet you. you. The is absolutely on mine. Thank you all for having me. Yeah. This is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I so, new, huh? This is, this is unbelievable. So, like I said, they're watching the entire plant from here. Um, everything is controlled here. Um, he's also got, of course, cameras there to monitor the thing. He can actually see what the scale loss is doing to through the CompuWay system. Yeah. And the trucks are processing. So this is everything. This is from the beginning to the end. You can literally monitor the entire plant from these computers. He can see everything too and control everything from here too. But this is basically ethanol production over here. So. It's, a, it's a constant process, a constant check. Yep, process. it's absolutely. It's every couple hours. They're grabbing new samples just to make sure the instruments are on point and making adjustments as necessary. Excellent. And of course, then the lab keeps us in between the ditches as well, right? Yeah. They run the final quality checks to make sure everything's just make sure. ship. So this is the lab. This is the lab. This is our big lab. It's a chemistry set in here. <laughs> <laughs> On steroids. <laughs> right, right. But yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. So constant testing. Constant testing. Yeah, it's, you guys work from what, five to three most times, and it's never how long, how long have you been here, ma'am? I've been here since day one, so. 15, 15 years. years. How many times have you heard that today? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> the Rose Ethanol Plant in Charles City is a modern marvel. And this plant is one of 12 ethanol plants Valero has operating in the United States. Their combined production creates 1.6 billion gallons of fuel per year. With the ethanol made, now it's time to ship the product. Our ethanol loadout system, um, we got two skids right now, so we can load two cars simultaneously. Um, roughly throwing about 14 to 13 to 14 of these a day. Okay. Um, and this, this is the finished stuff? product that goes in here. This is our finished product. This is straight 200 proof. Um, it's got a little bit of denaturant mixed in, so it's gasoline, a lower grade gasoline, just to make it unfit for human consumption. And then a small trace amount of corrosion inhibitor just to keep from pipes from deteriorating. Okay. So safe transport that okay. way. So definitely a lot of precautions, right? We're talking 200 proof ethanol. It's a very flammable material. Very volatile. You see a nice grounding system there for the cars to minimize that electricity. So he's finishing sealing up these cars. Um, but as you can see, it's basically two nice yeah. spouts. We'll wheel them over, put them on the top of the tank, strap them down. And fill it up. We'll look up the car to see what its fill volume is on our system. And it's basically it's type in the numbers and hit go, and that's it. They wait for about 40 minutes. It takes, so it takes 40 minutes to fill one up? Yep. So get that car positioned right underneath this platform. He'll lower it down, that way he's kind of enclosed. So shouldn't he stumble or fall, they're ready to catch him. And I'll move that into position and hit go. Okay. It's usually kind of a two-person tandem operation. They're in talks with one another. He's up here, or he's down below. He'll put the chalks in, ground them. Um, once he gets the go, he'll type the numbers in and start and filling. Then they'll watch, you know, for the first few thousand gallons of fill, make sure nothing leaks on the bottom valves there. And car seal it up. And how many gallons goes in per car? Uh, roughly 28,000. 28,000 gallons. So on average, we're probably making about 400,000 a day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you gotta do something with all those coins. I know, right? I know. <laughs> From the fields of Iowa to the engine in your car, Valero Renewables is powering commutes and communities across our country with abundant, clean energy. Energy production can and should be an all hands on deck approach. And the people at Valero in Charles City and the work they do are proof of it. Thanks to Valero for the opportunity to showcase your incredible work. And thank you to the people of I. There's no place like it. You're preserving the values that make our country special. And when you make it, we will drive. And that's how you save American energy.